All right, so we kind of have these two different sources of radiation. I think the real question is, what does it actually do to life in the body? We know it can damage electronics and a lot of electrical circuits in us, but more than that. So basically the idea is these are ionizing particles, yep. and as they plow through your body, they will break apart molecules. Okay. And if it's a soda particle, it won't penetrate very far. If it's a galactic cosmic ray, it'll penetrate further. Yep. And most of the molecules are going to blow apart and not going to do any damage. Okay. Like if it blows a water molecule apart in your bloodstream, I mean, who cares? Yeah. The real problem is if it hits something valuable like DNA. DNA. So the, the fundamental problem, the most likely problem with this is that most of these particles that go through your body will blow Nothing apart a water molecule yeah. or a calcium molecule and no one will care. But a very small fraction of them might hit just the wrong place and actually hit the DNA inside a cell. Okay. If there's a very, very high level of radiation, it might knock out every cell in your body. Yep. That's rarely the case. Normally, it's only a tiny fraction that's going to be knocked out, which is not normally a problem. If 0.1% if, uh, of the cells in your body die, your body's yeah. creating and killing cells all the time. So, so but it, if it hits that yeah. cell and causes the damage that makes that cell go cancerous, yes. then it's much more dangerous. So this is all a numbers game, right? How Absolutely many things it's going to hit and what it's going to hit. That's right. How do we know about the effects? Yeah. Well, we know about it from... Yeah. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yeah. and from nuclear accidents like Chernobyl. Yeah. They were trying to send robots out to clean the roof of the reactor. And the robots couldn't survive the radiation, so they sent... Human robots. Humans out. They had to go out for like 30 seconds and then go back into cover, but they still got lethal doses of radiation. Yeah. And so, and the first thing they learned is it's, for many sort of poisons, it's like low dose, you're fine, high dose, you're dead. Yeah. And there's a, a safe level. That's right. Maybe there's a low level where you're fine, a middle level where you're sick but recover, and a high level where you're dead. Exactly. Now, very high doses of radiation, yes, it kills every cell in your body and you're definitely dead. But most of the doses you're likely to encounter in space or on Earth are not like that. It's going to be a lethal dose, that's right. It turns out it's mostly what's called stochastic, so okay. it's random. The dose doesn't tell you above this level you die, below the level you don't. It gives you a probability. Yes. And the higher the dose, the probability. So you could have a higher dose and... And get lucky. Maybe they just don't hit the DNA. And the right I have place. a lower dose and become very unlucky and, and die from it. So it's all about probabilities. Yeah. So basically the probability of something nasty, probably cancer, depends on the dose. Okay. And, and the doses are measured in sieverts. Okay. Um, and if you're exposed to four or five sieverts in a short period, you have about a 50% chance of dying within 30 days. Okay. So that's the bottom line. Okay. So let's look at some numbers. So we have what's called the linear no threshold model. Okay. Now this is the standard model that's used for studying radiation damages. Okay. Doesn't mean it's true, but it's the one that's usually used. And basically what it's saying is you've got the probability of dying over here and the radiation dose over there. Okay. So stronger dose, higher, higher probability. probability. Of dying. Yes, exactly. So you could have a high dose and not die or a low dose and die. That's right, it's, exactly. It's a random It's a numbers game. Just yes. depending where that particular ionizing particle where it hits you. And, and so data up here. So basically, we only know the effects for large amounts of radiation. Oh, so like Fukushima or Chernobyl. Well, Fukushima actually was not a large sorry, amount of sorry, radiation. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Chernobyl or, or Hiroshima, Hiroshima or something yes, like that. Yes. And so from these cases, we know that there's, if you get one sievert, there's roughly a 5% chance of dying. And so before it was four to five sieverts, you About have... 50% roughly. Yeah, okay. It All depends right. a bit on which parts of the body yes, and so on. Yes, yes. Um, so that means, according to this model, if you have 10 times less radiation, got a 10% chance, 10 times less chance of dying. Okay. So at 0.1 sieve, it'd be a, instead of 5%, it'd be 5% divided by 10, 0.5%. If you go down to 0.01 sieve, it's now 0.05% chance of dying. So, and I guess this is the interesting thing, right? Because, you know, somebody say, hey, 5 percent that's high. The same other person may say, well, 5%, mm, yep. that, that, that's not high. Well, the trouble is you can't measure these things down here. Exactly. So for example, the current radiation dose, if you live one kilometer from the Fukushima, accident site is about 0.05 sieverts per year. That will give you about a 0.02% chance of dying. Yep. But you're probably going to be dying 30 years later from a cancer. That's right. 20% uh, of people will die from cancer anyway. So it might go up from 20% to 20.002%. There's no way you can measure that. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think this is the problem is, right, how do you correlate that to its actual consequences? And this is the trouble because most of the actual exposure we're going to be talking about for astronauts all people on Earth from nuclear disasters is right Long, down here yeah. at the very low levels and the changes in cancer rate. For example, when I was an undergraduate, the cloud of fallout from uh, Chernobyl mm. passed over Europe. I was actually having a geology right. field trip in a quarry being rained on at the time. 
and um, that, according to this figure, might give me a 0.0001% extra chance of dying, but how do you ever measure that? That's right. Um, so we know about this, we don't know about down here. And what are the doses you actually get from space? Okay. So we said about 6 sieverts, 600,000 millisieverts is the kills half the Chernobyl and that first responders. Your, yeah, okay. If an astronaut was out in a spacesuit during a major solar flare, you're talking about similar doses, several sieverts. So, so you're talking about a, a very real chance of a lethal killing you with kill. a good chance of killing you within, within a month or so and you'll be pretty sick even if it doesn't kill you, your hair is going to fall out yes um if you're inside the spacecraft during a major solar flare it's under a sievert okay and that's sort of talking about a few percent chance okay um it, and again this is it, it's the long term versus the short term as well yep and the cumulative dose from a round trip to mars is about the same okay so getting a few percent chance higher That's even if you Mars. don't get hit by a size yes. of storm while exactly. right there. Yeah. Um, so again if you believe this linear no threshold model that's telling you the radiation on a round trip to Mars will give you a few percent chance of dying maybe decades later that's of right. cancer. In low earth orbit it's about 150 millisieverts you're now talking about a half percent chance or something like that or even less. That's right. So these are sort of numbers we're talking about. Now solar flares it could have happened. And they do happen. There was a very major solar storm in August 1972, which is actually partway between the Apollo 16 yes. and Apollo 17. I was to say, missions. that was right before Apollo 17, yes. Um, and estimates are that they would have, if they'd be inside the spacecraft, that low Earth orbit, you're shielded by the Earth's magnetic field. No, they were no. not shielded That's when they right. were out on their way to the moon or on the moon's surface. That's right. So the moon doesn't have a magnetic field to protect you. So if they'd been right out here, it would have been several sieverts. So this is equivalent to Chernobyl? Yes, so a good chance of dying and very least seriously radiation sick. Wow. If they were inside there at the time, maybe someone gave them warning, quick, quick, run and find some shelter, then it's a few percent chance and maybe more mild sickness. Yeah. But it's certainly an issue. Okay. So solar storms are definitely dangerous, but you can shield from them, even the thin aluminium skins of spacecraft. You can't put too much weight on a spacecraft. That's right. Um, but you could perhaps build internal shelters. Yes. The best shelter is made of light molecules like hydrogen. So a water tank is a very good shelter. Even plastic sheeting can be very good. Mm. Um, so maybe you could do something about the risk of solar storms. You just have to give them warning and they go and hide in their little cubby hole inside. And, and, the... and we do have warning. That is the good thing, right? As we talked about, it takes time for the solar storms to reach Earth and, and the moon system. Yep. If you're on the moon or Mars, um, the atmosphere doesn't give you much protection, but you might want to build your space base yes. under a layer of regolith or something and go and hide in there. When... And then you would be mostly protected. Yes. But then there's the low dose you yes. get all the time. And that's... If you believe this linear no threshold model, it's going to give you a few percent chance of dying. And and so and I guess this becomes this issue that you have the the one-off cases where they pose a risk themselves and at the very least get sick. But what are those longer term effects? And even the longer term effects are yep. hard to quantify. And so there's there's a question about whether even if you get the same total dose of radiation, if it's spread over a long time, maybe it doesn't do so much damage. That's mm. what we're going to talk about next.